Welcome to this small video in our supply chain management models series. In this video, I'll be talking about one of the most classical the supply chain models, or, well, probably the most classical one. The one that I see most students use in their products, and I also see a lot of students getting in trouble in using. So I'll try to highlight a couple of the places where people have a tendency of going wrong when using it. But if you want to really move forward on some of the newer materials, see the video I have on the SCORE model because that is even better than this one, at least in my opinion. The Porter's value chain is all about value creation. And I think that's important to remember when you're working with this model and trying to describe a company using this model. Where is value created and how it is supported? As you see here, the small figure that I have on the side, the figure shows in bluish colors and one green. The green is defined as the value creation. The reason for the company to exist is create value above what the cost of operations is. If it can do that, well, then it has a reason. If it cannot, well, someone else should do it who can add value to it. But let's dig into it. We have the primary activities. That's the boxes on the bottom. The boxes which are the production side of things where the primary value creation is happening. Above it, we have the support activities, the activities that we need to have in place in order for the primary activities to work. All right, support activities, primary activities. In the primary activities, the first one and the first thing which happens in the value creation is inbound logistics. This is where we are receiving the raw materials, all the parts that we are going to do something with. We put them in the warehouse, we store them, we record them. After we have it in our company premises, we do operations or manufacturing production. We move things around and we make this fantastic product that we are going to ship to the customers at a certain point later in time. What you also notice, might notice here is that it's production. And this is also a very, very important factor to remember when we're looking and to use the Porter's value chain model, because it is tailored toward production companies and production companies with a reasonably simple production setup. Things come in in one end, they are done and go out in the other end. Unfortunately, most companies does not work that way anymore. And well, even when it was invented in the 70s, it was a little bit of a stretch, maybe an oversimplification, but it does help to put a mental framework into how things are done. So we produce here. What does we do? What, <laughs> what happens afterwards? Well, we do the outbound logistics. We prepare it. We ship it out to the uh, stores where it's going to be marketed and sold. It might be regular marketing with ads uh, on Google or in newspapers, or it can be a salesman going out and selling the products. Remember, this is important that these are also value adding activities, because if we could convince the customer that the product is worth more than the cost for manufacturing, well, it's adding value. Then we move on to the service because services is where people or companies all often differentiate themselves. This differentiation is important, especially in a competitive environment. Sometimes we can also see the service actually being the primary product for a company and the operations, the physical product or digital product, it can also be, is actually a trigger for providing the service where the actual money is earned. So these are primary activities 
inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and services. On top of that, we have the infrastructure or the all the support services. The infrastructure is related to the company setup. How is it organized? How is the buildings structured? What kind of network do they have? How are the, these things set up in order to support our logistics, operations, marketing and sales, etc. We also need some people to do this. Human resources, HR management, how do we recruit, how do we train, how do we put them into play, what kind of guidelines do they have, HR management. The technology or research and development, which is often also called, is where we invent things, we design new products based on what we believe that the customer wants. Lastly, our procurement or buying of raw materials or parts that we use and put into our inbound logistics. This is also often quite value adding activity. If you're good here, you can have an above normal profit margin. As I mentioned, this is a production oriented model. It also has a couple of terms which is quite relevant to know, which is the upstream and the downstream. And the way I usually explain it to students how to remember is that, well, this model was built, invented when production was the pinnacle of things. This was the top of the mountain. You couldn't get any higher than working with the production, which also means that the upstream activities goes until your operations or the production and downstreams goes into the customers after you have manufactured. It also gives an indication that the basic premise is that you do a push marketing. You do a push into the customers and the customers are not really involved in the designing of the product. You push it into their throat. Okay, so Thank you for watching this small presentation about the Porter's value chain. Again, take a look at the score model as well. I think you will like it. It's a little bit more complicated, but the value from putting your effort in there is many times bigger. See you later. Mm -hmm.